Hello, my name is Alan Logan. I'm here to talk to you today about joint work with Laura Chibanu on the post correspondence problem. This is a classical problem about free monoid morphisms. It's often defined using lists of words, but we're going to define it in terms of equalizers. This has the advantage that it easily generalizes to free group morphisms, but it also allows us to study all the solutions to the problem, the solution sets to the problem. So the equalizer of two maps, G and H, going from P to Q, is the set of points where they agree. So all the, element, all the elements X contained in P such that G of X equals H of X. In practice, we'll take P and Q to be either free groups or free monoids, and G and H to be free group morphisms or free monoid morphisms as appropriate. As G and H are morphisms, they'll take the identity element of P and the identity element, uh, well, they'll take the identity element of P to the identity element of Q. In particular, they agree on the identity element. So the identity element is contained in the equalizer. We can then ask, does the equalizer contain any other elements? And this is Post's correspondence problem. So given morphisms G and H, going from sigma star to delta star, the free monoid sigma on, going from the free monoid on the alphabet sigma to the free monoid on the alphabet delta, is the equalizer of these two maps trivial? And Post famously proved that this problem was undecidable. Now, we can generalize this problem to free groups. So the free group F of delta on the alphabet delta is a set of all reduced words over the alphabet delta and delta inverse. By a reduced word, I mean a word which contains no subword A, A inverse, and no subword A inverse A, where A is contained in delta, and A inverse is its formal inverse contained in delta inverse. Our product here is concatenation, just like in the free monoid setting. But in addition, we do free reduction. We remove each of these illegal subwords systematically. So we first, so and um, we iteratively remove these subwords. Then the post correspondence problem for free groups is completely analogous to the free monoid case. So given to group morphisms, G and H, going from F of sigma to F of delta, we ask the same question, is the equalizer trivial? The only difference is that, um, we have group morphisms between, between groups. However, there is one major difference, and that is that the decidability of Post's correspondence problem for free groups is open. Now, equalizers of free group morphisms have been studied before, but primarily for bijective morphisms. The equalizer of two bijective morphisms is called a fixed subgroup of an automorphism. These were studied from around about the mid 1970s, and you can find a, a survey article by Ventura from 2002. Fixed subgroups have deep links to topology via things called train track maps. Um, and this was an idea of Thurston's. Um, Thurston was one of the most influential topologists of the late 20th century. Um, so he's a nice name to name drop here. So I, I said that equalizers and free groups have barely been studied beyond bijective morphisms. Well, we can say two concrete things. The first thing is that the, posts, the, the PCP is decidable if neither map is injective. This is because the set, which I've written out here, is guaranteed to be non-trivial. So we've got a non-trivial subset in our equalizer. Therefore, our equalizer is, is guaranteed to be non-trivial. So our algorithm is we input two non-injective maps and we output, yes, the PCP, uh, the equalizer is non-trivial. So the proof of this statement is, is only a few lines, but it already th throws up issues when we try to link the PCP for free monoids to the PCP for free groups. 
All the easy proofs of undecidability of the PCP rely on the maps being non-injective. So if we want to prove that the PCP is undecidable for um, the free groups, we would have to we would have to be a lot more clever than simply taking the easy proofs and and applying them to the free group setting. Yeah. There's a lot of work to do. The second thing we know um, for sure about equalizers of free groups morphisms in general deals with the complement of this case. So either neither map is injective or one of them is. And if one map of one of the maps is injective, then the equalizer is finally generated. So in one case, the PCP is trivially decidable, and in the other case, we get quite a strong algebraic description of the equalizer, although no algorithm is involved in this case. But then we could ask, does there exist an algorithm um, which will find a finite basis for the equalizer? So um, Stallings asked this question, um, which was called the algorithmic equalizer problem. So given um, a pair of free group morphisms, one of which is injective, we want to output a basis for your equalizer. We know that a basis exists, but can we find it? This problem implies the PCP, because if you can find um, a basis, you can use this to understand and uh, to determine if your equalizer is trivial or not. So if your basis is empty, your equalizer is trivial, and if your basis is not empty, then your equalizer is, is not trivial. So you can phrase the PCP in terms of the basis. Okay, so we could take the PCP and we can um, generalize that to free groups. We can take the, this problem, the AEP, the algorithmic equalizer problem, and generalize it to free monoids. When we do that, we obtain the following problem. So we take as input a pair of, of morphisms, but this time we want to output an automaton recognizing the equalizer. This is more general than asking for a, a free basis. Um, there are equalizers which are regular languages, but they aren't um, finally generated uh, free submonoids of the free monoid. Now, as with um, the free group setting, um, this version of the algorithmic equalizer problem, the AEP, implies the PCP. So immediately we know that no algorithm exists. This follows from Post's original proof. There's two reasons, however, for undecidability. The first one, which feels a bit like cheating, is that a finite automaton may not exist. A stronger statement is that even when an automaton exists, there is no algorithm. So even if we ignore the cheating version, there is still no alg algorithm to solve this problem. Now, I want to motivate this problem slightly more. So it started life as a, a natural problem about free groups, but we can motivate it for free monoids by talking about equalizers of sets of maps. So the equalizer of a set of maps is a set of points where all these maps agree on. And you can think of this as being the intersection of the equalizers. So you take G and H contained in S, you compute, or um, and the equalizer of, of all the sets is the intersection of all these equalizers, equalizers G and H. And then we can ask the same problem, the same algorithmic problems of these equalizers. So um, the PCP, the simultaneous PCP is a problem um, given a finite set is the equalizer trivial. So finite set is the equalizer trivial and the simultaneous AEP is the problem given a finite set, find an automaton accepting this language. And these two problems are given in terms of free monoids, but of course we can define them completely analogously in terms of free groups. Now, the following implications are straightforward. So 
that the simultaneous PCP implies the PCP is clear because the PCP is a special case of the simultaneous one. The simultaneous version deals with finite sets and the PCP deals with sets of size two. Now the simultaneous AEP implies the simultaneous PCP because as I was mentioning previously that the AEP implies the PCP because one is about um, computing a basis and the other one, or in this setting, computing an automaton. And the other, so the simultaneous PCP is just a question of does this automaton accept a non-empty word? What is less clear is that the simultaneous AEP is actually equivalent to the AEP. So, similarly to the PCP and the simultaneous PCP, um, the simultaneous AEP implies the AEP just because one's about all finite sets and the other is about finite sets of size two. The other direction um, is, is not that difficult though. So, we if we assume that the AEP holds, this means that we can compute each of these equalizers. So given any two elements, G and H contained in S, we can compute uh, an automaton except in the language of the equalizer G and H. Now we can then use standard automata theoretic algorithms to compute the intersection of this finite set of languages. In particular, we can find an automaton accepting this intersection language, so we can find an automaton accepting the equalizer of S. This means that the AEP implies its simultaneous version. Therefore, the AEP implies a simultaneous PCP, which in turn implies a PCP. And what this means, in effect, is that we can completely ignore the simultaneous AEP. So, we started with the PCP, this uh, classical problem about free monoids, and then we interpreted it, and then we generalized it to free groups. And then we had a natural problem about free groups, which we generalized to free monoids. And in this generalization, we're able to understand sets of maps rather than just pairs of maps. Now, the maps that we're going to, um, that our theorems are about, are marked morphisms and immersions of free groups. These are defined very similarly. So um, a set of words is marked if each word is non-empty, and they start with different letters of delta. So for example, this set here, x, y, and y, x, y is marked because one word starts with x, and the other word starts with Y. A free monoid morphism is marked if the image of the generators under this set is marked. So in our example here, one generator is marked to map to XY and the other generator is mapped to YXY. So we take the set consisting of XY and YXY and we ask, is this set marked? And of course, this set is the same set as we had before, so we already know it's marked. So this morphism is a marked morphism because the image of the generators is marked. Marked morphisms appeared in the proof of the binary PCP in 1982, and the, the PCP for marked morphisms is known to be decidable as well. And I should mention that these proofs are an important part of our work. Um, the proof of the Mark PCP is the source. Our, our proofs are inspired by that proof. Now, an immersion of free groups is analogous to a marked morphism, but for free groups. So here, instead of just taking f of sigma, we take the inverses. Because we're in a free group, we care about inverses, so we consider the image of the generators and their inverses, and we, uh, and we require this set to be marked. So it's completely analogous. 
However, it's slightly more subtle. Um, if we take exactly the same map, so A goes to XY and B goes to YXY, this is not an immersion because it's a free group morphism. So although it was marked as a free monoid morphism, when we look, think about it as a free group morphism, we have to care about inverses as well. So A inverse and B inverse. So A is mapped to XY and B is mapped to YXY as before. But A, in, A inverse is mapped to Y inverse, X inverse. And B inverse is mapped to Y inverse, X inverse, Y inverse. And both of these words start with a Y inverse and therefore, um, this map is not an immersion. Okay, so here's our first main theorem, which is about free groups. So the proof is inspired by the proof of the Mark PCP. In order to prove the, the theorem, we looked at the proof of the Mark PCP and we to constructed it and worked out how it works, and then we tried to put it back together for free groups. Trying to do this naively didn't quite work. There were some hurdles that needed to be overcome, and we had we in order to overcome these problems, we had to prove a slightly stronger result. So this is the result which we proved, which is um, about immersions of free groups. So we take as input, so the theorem has as input a set of immersions and it says that there exists an immersion which describes a equalizer. So um, our equalizer is, is given in terms of, of an immersion. This is quite a strong algebraic result. Moreover, we get an algorithm which obtains this description. So the theorem's got two points, uh, two parts. Firstly, it's got a algebraic description. Secondly, it's got an algorithmic aspect if the set is finite. So the theorem works for infinite sets as well. Our first corollary of this theorem is the um, is that it solves the problem of, of Stallings stated earlier. So the AEP is soluble for immersions of free groups and this really just follows from the second paragraph. Um, there exists an algorithm which will compute this description in terms, in terms of an immersion, and you can use this description to find your basis. A second corollary is based on the algorithmic description. So this is um, this answers a different question of Stallings, which I hadn't mentioned earlier. So it says that um, your equalizer has got rank bounded by the obvious thing. So Stallings asked whether and um, every equalizer is bounded by um, bounded by the size of sigma, and we, we prove that this is true. And this really follows from the fact that phi of, of s is an immersion. Um, immersions, the image of an immersion is always bounded by um, the size of the ambient free group. Okay. Now, I mentioned that our proofs started with um, the proof of the Mark PCP. We had to extend the ideas in this proof in order to apply them to free groups. And we, so we obtained a stronger result. We realized that when we deconstructed this stronger result and applied to free monoids, we obtained a stronger result than just that the Mark PCP is decidable. In fact, we proved a completely analogous result to the free group result um, essentially by um, tweaking their proof a little bit and um, some extra little things. But the, um, the proof is broadly the same as um, the original Mark PCP, just with a few extra little touches. So, um, so it, similarly to the free group uh, theorem, we take as input a Mark morphism and we output a mark morphism. So there exists a mark morphism which describes our equalizer. And we also have this algorithmic aspect. Um, if our set is finite, then we can compute this equalizer. And in addition, we, we obtain the same two corollaries that the algorithmic equalizer problem is soluble for mark morphisms and that our 
equalizer is free, which is not immediate, and it's got rank um, bounded by the obvious thing. Um, so again, the um, the first corollary is based on the second paragraph, and the the second corollary is based on the algorithmic description, uh, the algebraic description as the image of a marked morphism. Okay, so I, I said that the, the two proofs were really similar and they used essentially um, the same idea. So they have the same structure and I'll now summarize this structure. So the underlying idea in this structure in, in the proofs is something called a pullback, which is a notion from category theory. So in this picture, we've got um, f of delta is, is f of delta, h naught is just h, and g naught is just g, and, and sigma naught is just sigma. Then we do something called the pullback to obtain g1, h1, and f of sigma 1. The process um, of computing these is called reduction, which is the, um, the language used in the Mark PCP paper. They didn't call this a pullback map, they called it blocking. But once you realize that this map is a pullback map, which is, like, as I said, a notion from category theory, you can apply the same, um, the same notion to the free group setting. So this idea of reduction generalizes very naturally to free groups. This f of sigma 1 really corresponds. Um, it's not equal to, but it um, corresponds in a very specific way. Um, to the image of G intersect image of H. Okay, so there are three theorems uh, which are important here. The first theorem is that reduction preserves equalizers. So when we do this reduction, we're not altering our equalizer. The second theorem is that Reduction starts looping. So we've got a f essentially it's a finite process, which is good from an algorithmic point of view. And the third theorem is that once we start looping, we can use this looping to find a basis. And um, so our algorithm is we apply this reduction, so we, we repeatedly do reduction. Once it starts looping, we consider this um, we consider this subset um, G1. Uh, so we take we take our basis sigma k of, of our um, production S group and we apply it so it now is contained within F of sigma naught. And we consider the elements of the set um, the elements of the, this set are either contained in our equalizer, which we can determine just by um, checking if the maps agree on them, and the elements where they agree form our basis. So that's the process. We do reduction, we find this subset, and then we um, verify which elements of the subset are in our equalizer. And the fact that this is, um, forms a basis is, is, is using the fact that equalizers are preserved. And this map, G1 up to GK, turns out to be marked or an immersion in the appropriate setting, which is where the, the marked map or the, or the immersion in our main theorem comes from. So in conclusion, not the PCP is not only decidable for marked morphisms, but we can compute the equalizer for an arbitrary finite set of maps. Analogously for free groups, we get a decidable PCP, and we can compute the equalizer for an arbitrary finite set of, ma of maps, if those maps are immersions. However, the PCP and the AEP both remain open in general for free group morphisms, although the monoid morphism um, questions are undecidable. And finally, um, I forgot to mention earlier that a constant non-zero proportion of all free monoid and group morphisms are in fact marked morphisms and immersions. So there's a significant proportion of all maps are these. Thank you for your attention.